Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. What was your home life like? Who was? Who was? Uh, I mean, I had a great home life. Uh, my mom and father got along good. Uh, had older brother and uh, older sister that lived with me. Um, all, all I can remember basically was just going to the gym over there with my father. Yeah. I just thought, you know, saying, uh, I just had, I had a great, uh, you know, great home life. Okay, and what kind of neighborhood you come from? I mean, in Chicago, uh, they got a, it's a, it's a neighborhood called the Wild Wild Hundreds. Um, I live on 101st and Low. Uh, back in the, back in those days, in the 70s, I don't think it was that bad. I mean, you know, I went to the park by myself. I did a lot of things, uh, I was, yeah, I lived in, I was like a middle class. Mm-hmm. And you stayed? I lived in a house, you know. Yeah. Of course, of course. I, uh, I had a great father that raised me right. And I had great parents, you know what I'm saying, that, uh, that, you know, just raised me right, taught me my life. And I was, I was too embarrassed. Uh, my father died when I was 12. I was too embarrassed to embarrass, you know, to embarrass his name. So, you know, my, 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 my whole motto when I was a kid was if I could go to jail or die, I wasn't doing it. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I really didn't handle peer pressure. I really handle guys trying to, you know, to do, you know, bad things or whatever. Um, I think all the guys in the neighborhood respected me. You know, they knew I boxed. And I, I, didn't, I didn't have no problem, you know, coming up. Mm -hmm. And you said your dad died. Do you want to say how he died or not? He had a heart attack. He had a heart attack. He was actually in the corner of one of his fighters, uh, Blabber Borkins. He fought in uh, Atlanta City in 83. He died April second, and uh, he was in the um, he was in, uh, he was in the corner mm -hmm. at, one, at his fight, and uh, one of his fighters had a heart attack and died. Yeah, man, that's tough, huh? And uh, let's see. And your dad got you interested in boxing. How old were you when you first went to a gym? Uh, I, was, I mean, my mother got a picture when I think I was sixteen months. I was in the gym, so boxing was just like. Everyday life to me. Uh, that was just my blood. It was, I was looking to be a boxer. Um, I was in the gym. Uh, I go to the gym every day with my father. It was on um, 63rd University. And um, it, was, it was close to a, a neighborhood called Half Park. It's still one of the best neighborhoods in Chicago. But my mom and I lived. And um, I just know my father, they were going to be my rally. And after that, you know, we used to go, go over his house, we used to come to the gym. I just spent a lot of time with him. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool, man. And uh, you had a great amateur career. You were like 36 and 5. You won the 92 U.S. Amateur Light Heavyweight title. No, I, that, that's wrong. I was 30 and 3. 30 and 3? I only, only lost to Jeremy Williams and I lost to Jordan. That's a lie, but uh, mm -hmm. the two fights with Jeremy Williams is very... Uh, very, uh, yeah, I, I thought I won both fights. I, I, we fought four times. I thought I'd beat him all four times, but I didn't have the judges side, and, you know, it is what it is. Mm hmm And, and then they lost. Yeah. You, you beat John Ruiz, right? What do you remember about John Ruiz? I beat John Ruiz. I beat, I beat Jeremy Ruiz twice, who was one of the great amateurs in boxing history. I beat John Ruiz. What do you remember about John Ruiz? And I beat Terry McGraw. Uh, John, um, was kind of different. John didn't fight the way he fought in the pros. Um, John actually could box. Mm -hmm. He was an amateur. I, I don't know how, why he ended up fighting the way he did as a pro. 
not taking nothing away from him because you know he had a great career or whatever. But he didn't fight like he did as a pro as he did as an amateur. So he didn't hug a lot. <laughs> he was a good fight. Um, he, he didn't hug a lot in the amateurs. Because no, nah, I mean no, nah, he, he could box. I, I mean I don't know why he ended up changing the style or whatever. Um, you know, he, he uh, I respect him. You know, I'm saying he had a great career. He, he, he one of my idols is Dan Holyfield. Mm -hmm. He he uh had a different he got a, he had a different type of style style that kind of nasty but yeah. it worked for him. Mm -hmm. Then you came to Worcester, Massachusetts for the Olympic trials, and you got outpointed. You think you beat Jeremy all four times? You said I know I beat him. There's no way in hell I lost that fight. I mean, uh, I remember Tony Austin, the great battle uh, one champion, and uh, uh, bronze medalist. Uh, he spoke at the fight with Jeremy Aston at the fight. Do we, do we think I won? he won? And Timmy said, told him like, shit, do you think you won?" And everybody knew I didn't. Everybody know that man did not beat me, but he did what he was. He was uh, a big name in boxing. I came out of nowhere, hmm. and um, you know I did what I did, but you know hmm. it ended up turning out right for me. It turned out all right, okay for me. Yeah, and then you outpointed him twice at the box off. So yeah, I, I mean every okay. I just tell like this: I beat him the last two fights for the box off and for the uh, for the. For, uh, I beat him two fights to, to win the box house. Mm -hmm. The first time I fought him, I beat him worse than I beat him any of the other two times, and I didn't get the decision. So the boxing is just crazy. I, I beat, I destroyed him the first time we fought. He he sat down and told me that I beat him. Mm -hmm. But the last two fights when I got the decision, I didn't beat him as good as I did the first time I fought him. But it is what it is. Yeah. How do you feel when you made it to the Olympics? I mean, it was the greatest, uh, it was like a dream to me. I mean, you gotta understand one thing. I was a kid who stopped boxing at 12 years old. I took off for eight years. I came back a year before the Olympics. There only 30 amateur fights, and I made the Olympic team. So, it was the greatest experience I've ever been through in my life at that time. Hmm. Yeah, you won your first two fights there, and then you got appointed by Torres How How'd you feel? Yeah, that's what they say. I, I, you know, I got blue shoes on, national television. I hit the man with a, with a left hand over his jab because he was a softball and busted out. He was bleeding like a pig. <laughs> and what amateur fight do you know that they let continue with once a, a, a guy is bleeding? I mm know. -hmm. That's crazy, huh? So, you know, I think they, 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 they stole my gold medal from me. So, it is what it is. Hmm. How'd you feel when you left with no medal? You felt robbed, right? I, was, I felt, man, I didn't even stay to the end of the Olympics. Hmm. So, I left, I left the next day. I flew back to Chicago. I was, that's how sick I was. Mm. Because, you know, that was just a dream of mine. I remember the first fight I remember watching with my father. It was the 76th Olympics watching uh, Ray Leonard win his gold medal. Mm. And, you know, that was, I never, that's all I thought about. I never even thought about turning pro or being a world champion. All I thought about was the gold medal. And, um, and I'm going to take it from me. It, it was just heartbreaking. Mm. Did you know you were going to turn pro right away? Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I knew, uh, well, I, I can't say right away because I wasn't, I, a lot of guys turned pro before me, had they fight before me. I didn't, I wasn't around to, uh, you know, 93 before I even started fighting. I just took some time off. I was so hurt from the Olympics, I just took some time off. Got my head back straight and, um, that thing went over. Hmm. And, uh, and then, did you turn pro and have Eddie Fletcher in your corner right away? Nah, uh, I think I think I had seven fights before I was with Eddie Fletcher. Did you have one trainer before that, or did you just travel around trying to see who? I just worked with my brother. I worked with my brother and um, uh, and the guy here in Chicago, the older guy who uh, had been out for a long time, D.D. Armour. I worked with my brother, D.D. Armour, and um, Eddie Davis. Mm -hmm. And you know my, uh, you know, D.D. was getting older. I was going to retire, but my trainer, you know, they, you know, they wanted me to find better trainer, so they found Eddie Fletcher and Phil Thomas. Mm -hmm. And who was more hands-on with you, Eddie or Phil? Uh, you know, Eddie was 87 years old when I met him. Mm -hmm. He had, you know, he had Mike McCallum, he had Riddick Bowe, he had Wayne McCullough, so um, he didn't really have the time for me. I mean, he tried his best, and I just respected, you know, what he did. 
I respect it, you know what. You know, basically, I don't mean no disrespect, but at that time, you work with, you work with the guys who make the most money, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Woody Bowl and, and Mike McCann always make more money than me, so he spent more time with them. Yeah. Uh, so it just it left me with their toys who, who really spent more time with me. And, uh, mm-hmm. I knew where I needed to be. What did you learn from Phil? I learned everything. I mean, um, the first thing that any person them told me is that they wasn't here trying to change my style. And so I had a style that was different, that, you know, that was just God-given. They said they weren't going to try to change me. They were let me do fight the way I wanted to fight. They just going to um, just try to, uh, talk, you know, call up and do it, you know, uh, as good as possible. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then you won your first 14 fights and you got a shot at come back in James Tony. He just lost to Roy. And, uh... Uh, you you won your first fourteen fights, then you got the shot at James Tony. And uh, the, the crazy thing about it was, um, I fought uh, I fought the LA Cup for the Budweiser um form title. I beat Ray Bacon, who was one of the greatest amateurs. I beat him. He was on the feet of fourteen or thirteen knockouts, and I think I had thirteen fights or whatever. And, um, I beat him. And it was the funny thing about it was, I had won the, uh, I was in a fight when John Tony fought Roy Jones. And, um, Jackie Callen actually would go upstairs and say hi to James because, hey, you know, I met John Tony, uh, I stayed at the house, he was going to be my manager. But, but we sparred. And after we sparred, I was looking, I mean, I was an amateur, he was a two time world champ. And I said, shit, I'm like, I'm just a bit of these right now. I said, I don't know if I want him to be my manager. And, you know, they offered, the money that they offered me wasn't, wasn't what I wanted. I just went back home. So, when I saw Jackie, she was having to see me. She was like, I have to come up to the house of James. And I was like, well, I really want to. She was like, we'd love to see you. And as soon as we got in the room, she was like, look, James, guess who wanted to come say hi to you? And I'm like, I'm like no, 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 that wasn't how it was. I was like, I didn't want to come up here. And he acted real dry with me and everything. So, so I just didn't understand that. And as soon as I was Skipper Kelp, I was playing my work with um, Contender. I was Skipper Kelp, man. Um, as soon as they called me after we were done fight to fight James, Skip was, Skip was fucking Skip told me, I bet you they knew that day that they wanted to fight you. You know what I'm saying? So, it wasn't no big deal. So, I had 14 fights. Uh, and these first and third points actually didn't want me to take the fight. Um, they thought maybe I wasn't ready yet, but, uh, my manager just asked me, he said, you know, he sat me down, he said, can you beat this man? And I said, yeah, I can beat him, I know I can. He said, well, we're going to take the fight. And, uh, you know, it was a good fight, 12 rounds, a close fight, uh, like I said, I'm, I can't really say, you know, I was a better fighter than at that time, I just think we out, out hustling. Mm-hmm. That's honest, man. Really? That was crazy impressive. I loved when he caught you with that right hand and you, you stayed up, you know? I thought you were going down. Yeah, uh, well, any first, it was my fault. I didn't listen. What happened was, the first two rounds of the fight was basically, the fight went, was even just going easier than I had anticipated. And I got a little lazy. And he told me, because Jerry and Tony were great right-hand counterpuncher. He told me, do not throw a right hand when I come back a left foot. When I come back with a left foot, and I did it, and he called me, so, you know, I just, he got, you know, I got taught, us, you know, I learned a lesson. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, the best thing about the world, I didn't go down. And it, it really didn't end up making a difference anyway, because, um, later on in the fight, I caught him with a shot, and he fell into the ropes, just like Roy Jones, and they went crazy with a knockdown, so, it really, you know, it really didn't make a difference. Now, were you nervous before that fight? Yeah, but I know I've been nervous for a fight in my life. Mm-hmm. That's why I got to live long with ice. I mean, I've been in the gym since I was two years old. I never had it. It's in my blood. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the rematch was almost two years later. And that's what I said. I forgot that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you. Say it again? Yeah, it, 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 was actually, it, was actually, it was actually a year later, but it was basically two years because I think the first time we fought in February, mm-hmm. the same time we fought in December. Yeah. And next year, so it was basically like two years, and uh, I just knew uh, 
on my strength, my skill level, I did a first fight. I knew I could beat him. Yeah. And how did James and I did, do I build up? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's um, I really, I really, I mean, see, with James, I knew because I, I see, I stayed in his house. We, you know, I don't say we were friends, but we were cordial with each other. I never knew. I knew that he couldn't. He try to talk God or me or try to punk me or try to intimidate me. But we were friends. So you know, the second fight, he, he promised me. He promised that he was ready. There would be no excuses. So I was like, okay. And um, we ended up getting into it at the uh, press conference. Basically, not because of him, because of me. Um, they asked us to stand up and um, you know, get up you know, and take a, you know, play, you know, stare down and all to take pictures and. Um, I didn't want to, uh, you know, blink or look away or whatever. So I just started talking garbage to him. And he didn't like it, so he pushed me. So I walked up to him and went in his mouth. So, I mean, that's basically it was what it was. I didn't really want to worry about James Tony. Mm-hmm. And did he, what fight did he give you a harder time in? Was it the second fight or first fight? Well, the first fight, the second fight. I mean, I, I, I still to his dad, I was on the stand. I know some other James Tony fans out right here, but... I just say it's controversial. I mean, I, I don't understand it. I, 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 I dominate that man in the same fight. He didn't hit me with nothing. Mm-hmm. I basically play with him. So, you know, uh, these guys watch fights and listen to the HBO commentary who Jay Tony the HBO fighter. So, of course, they're on his side. So, mm-hmm. I just tell people watch the fight with the, with the volume down. I did that. It's, it's, it's <laughs> fight. I really did that. Watch the fight with the volume down. And it was a whole different fight. That's true. I was a big James Tony fan at the time too, so I didn't like that you beat him, but I did watch the fight, and you could clearly see you had an easy time with him. It's strange how the HBO commentators do that. They don't do that as much anymore as they. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think people got tired of that, man. What they do is they they hit him times to to they hit him times into believing that you saw what they saying. That's true. Now, now, when you got the fight, how did the fight with Roy come up? Uh, basically, really, Roy was supposed to fight James. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't think he was looking past me. And he was going to give James a second chance. And <clears> if <throat> I beat him, he didn't have nowhere else to go. So they were uh, moving me to number one, and, and, you know, and, and I got the name for him. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like you were going to beat Roy that night? Confident, totally? Yeah. I mean, I, I've, never, I've never been nervous or scared a day in my life. Mm-hmm. Boxing is in my blood. I mean, when Joe was a great fighter, I mean, uh, you know, who cares? My father had a uh, saying that, that I remember when I was a kid, he, he told people, you know, uh, who was scared or nervous or whatever. He said, when that man put his pants on, or just like you. Mm-hmm. And I always remember that. I mean, I never worried about the world, you know. I mean, I always kind of questioned. I mean, he was on steroids or whatever, but, you know, I, I really wasn't worried about it. Um, I went to the fight. I knew, I knew, I, I, to this day, I know Roy Jones was fast me, but I knew I could, I could match his speed. Mm-hmm. And I know Roy, you know, he fight, he want to fight when he want to fight. And if you take the pressure to him, he don't like that. And it was just a good, a good game plan for him. Um, going to the ninth round, I thought I was winning the fight. They gave him, they gave him a knockdown that I don't think he, that he, he shouldn't have got credit for. He, he legged with me. He threw a punch, but he legged with me. So when I fell, I guess the referee thought he, thought he hit me. But Roy knew he didn't hit me because if you hit a guy and knock him down, you think he got him hurt. Roy didn't even jump on me because he knew he didn't, he didn't hit me. Mm-hmm. But he got credit for a knockdown. If he didn't get, if he didn't get credit for the knockdown, I won it on every scorecard. So but it was what it was. Um, I, uh, I got lazy in the ninth round. And I tried to roll with the right hand instead of blocking it. And I got hit in the back of the head and just got a little dizzy. And I just told myself, I said, look, you're winning the fight. Just take me. And then, we, you know, we got to win 10, 11, 12 to go out, you know, to win the title. So that's why I took it to me. And, you know, he he, 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 was on, he had Roy Reigns. He was, he, he, he was still Roy. He was a, he fell a still Roy test. He had Roy Reigns. And uh, Roy Reigns, he walked up to me and hit me. And, uh, now, when you were preparing for that fight, did Eddie Futch have a more hands-on role in that fight, or did? I mean, uh, Eddie, Eddie, you know, put the game plan together. Like I said, because of Bill, because of Eddie, because of Eddie's age, 
12 hours to one time. Mm -hmm. So he didn't change and give you more time because you were fighting Rick? Because I know he was... He was I mean, basically, they, the one good thing about both of those guys <clears throat> is they're on the same page as far as they training and teaching. But they never really contend with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Eddie came up with a plan to beat Ray. Because I know he came up with a plan to beat Ali two times, you know, Kenny Norton. Yeah, well, yeah, we always talk about that. I mean, I, Ali saying he was Kenny Norton doing Fraser fans, so we always got into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he used to always say, you know, I beat Ali twice. I said, okay. I said, uh, he had a football player that fought Ali. We lost to him. He had Joe Fraser and Kenny Norton that fought Ali. I said, okay. I said, okay. One thing I give you credit for, you beat Ali twice. I said, but your record is two and seven. I said, that's not a good record. So he was always, you know, just sit around and laugh. <laughs> I said, two, I said, two and seven is not a good record. <laughs> and we just, you know, we just sat around and laugh. Yeah, I'm glad he could take that. Man. A lot of people wouldn't even want to hear that. Shit. I, I was really, I was pretty much the only guy in the gym that stood up at him first. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else kind of just, you know, kissed his ass and. <laughs> you know, just you know, with everything he said. I mean, not saying I was disrespectful, but I just spoke my mind. I always, I always been that type of guy. I don't care who I'm talking to. I, I still was on my mind, and I was by my tongue. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like I said, I grew up with my Ali. He was like a Joe Fraser fan, so I mean, so we just, you know, we always used to put hands on that. Mm -hmm. Were you mad that you weren't given a chance to beat Ray in that fight? Pardon? Were you mad that people thought you were just going to go in there and get beat like everybody else did against Ray? Uh, nah, I really could care less. I think I was a seven one hundred dog. I made twenty five thousand dollars on myself, so no, nah, I wasn't mad. Mm -hmm. And I, I swear, I would always tell people the way you got to be Ray Jones, and you were the like only person who ever did that to Ray. As soon as that fight started, you could see. Right, no I mean, you know, Tava knocked him out. Then Johnson beat him. That's all these fights later on in his career, but. I beat him when he got his, 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 his peak, he his best. And that's it. And he was totally frustrated by that. You know, you could tell. He he only did that because he was frustrated and he was losing. People thought he... No question. He apologized to me sometimes. Right. Every time I saw him, he apologized to me for years. Hmm. He really was wrong. That's cool. It was, was ruined, right? Just like a lot of the through that bag of Mike Piazza. He, he didn't have no control of that. Hmm. The words took over. The war hit me when I was on my knee. The war is to go. He had no control of that. Hmm. What did you think of his speed when you were in the ring? Baddest man I've ever, ever been in the ring with in my life. I, I sparred I Floyd Mayweather when he was uh, about 135. I was about 180. And his speed couldn't match uh, uh, Roy Jones' speed. It, it was no comparison. Hmm. And yeah. so Roy, you know, Floyd couldn't hit me with nothing. I couldn't hear him either, I'm not gonna lie. We couldn't hear each other, but the roar of the speed was a whole lot of life. Hmm. And, uh, let's see, you answered some questions already. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> you answered everything, man. <laughs> How surprised were you when he did hit you when you went down? Did you know what um, happened, or were you... I was very surprised. I mean, what happened was, when I took the knee, I looked at the referee for him to start the count. I didn't even see Roy. But when he walked into the hit the first time, I looked at the ref to complain, and he loaded up the second time, so I didn't see that. So I'm just glad, thank God, that I didn't get killed, I didn't die. And I, I thank God that I didn't lose consciousness. Mm -hmm. He hit me and he hurt me, and I fell and hit the, you know, ground. And you got these dumbass people that said I was faking. Mm -hmm. I just could never believe that. But uh, my, my head hit the floor. It hit the floor hard, too, because I had a scar on my, face, on my forehead. But uh, I just heard the referee count. And I couldn't move. It was like, I, 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 like I, I knew everything that was going on, but it was like I was, uh, like I was uh, paralyzed. Like, I had no control of my body. So when I heard the referee count, I said, I can't believe it. So they're going to count me out. So when I got up and... I didn't try to get together, I told my brother. And he said, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry about it. Like, uh, I think they're going to disqualify him. So, um, they had, you know, he did the right thing, he disqualified him. So, I mean, to this day, I never was happy about that. I never wanted to end up fighting, you know, disqualification. 
I actually, the next, the next night, the fight, the WA had the convention in, in uh, Long City, and I went to it, and I was, you know, kind of, you know, uncomfortable, I didn't really know how, I didn't really know how people don't react towards me, and every great fighter walked into me and said, man, we want that fight, don't worry about nothing. Huh. Huh. So that made me feel a bit Yeah. And how did it feel to hear Michael Buffer say, and knew? How's that feel? Uh, like I said, I didn't want it that way. It was cool, but, you know, like, like, like to this day, uh, I'm more happy with the Sega Jones on the fight as I am with the World Jones fight. I mean, I know I was the WT World Champion, but like I said, I never wanted, I never wanted it that way, so it never was a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. And the rematch was already made as soon as you beat him. No, no, with you were the WC, of course, in the fight, which, um, if I were to, you know, knew then what I know now, you know, I would have, I would have handled things a little bit more differently. Um, I would have just said, "Fuck me, right? just gave up the title and um, fought somebody else." But yeah, it is what it is. I mean, they, you know, WC forces. Uh, I actually just talked about it today. I was looking at uh, Ron Lawrence and Tommy Hearns on there. I told my wife that me and Tommy was going to fight. One day that fight was fight Tommy Hearns. And I said, I wish I could have fought Tommy Hearns. Just, uh, just to say, I fought him to have his name on my record. But uh, <laughs> they forced me to fight him. And, you know, I'm a fighter, so uh, my, my promoter and my manager didn't really look out for me like they should have. So I did, you know, I fought him again. And um, it was one of the series I've made my career. Um, and you know, I've you know, invested so much money in Roy. They wanted to make sure he got his title back. So I was forced into the ring. I wasn't able to wear him up. It was just, it was just a, uh, a bad situation, and I lost the fight. Oh, they rushed like, you? Know, put my, you know, they rushed me in the ring, and it just threw my crew off track for, for a few years. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You answered that too, man. Hold on, next question. How did Roy treat you in the build-up for the second fight? Was he disrespectful? Uh, we, I mean, we didn't talk, no, no, no. We, we, we didn't see each other. We did we didn't show up to the press conference. We didn't talk to each other. We didn't say nothing to each other. HBO was really uh, kind of worried because my friend, my, I had a great, um, I had great fans and friends who, who, who followed me and supported me. And I'm um, really, you know, actually was scared of my friends. You know, most guys, you know, when you say Chicago, I don't think of gangsters and everything. They was actually intimidated and didn't want my friends to be around, so. You know, it was kind of a crazy situation. We didn't even see each other and talk to each other none before the fight. Hmm. Did you feel the rest of the media besides HBO respected you, or were were people still? Um, I, I think I think um, I think I've been one of the most underrated fighters in history. Hmm. So I think the, the reason why you know Olympics, I came out of nowhere, so they didn't really know what to expect from me, and then the pros. So you got a five foot seven like heavyweight who would outbox any man in the ring and was short and you know, they, I just think nobody really just took me serious. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I never got the respect I deserve. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you came back three months after that and you had a few fights to come back and then you fought Eric Harding. What do you remember about Eric Harding? You ended up losing the split. Yeah, you ran like a girl for twelve rounds. Mm. I just think that uh Dan Goose and um Dan Goose and uh I swear I had uh I swear for Barry Harmon. And um I got I got cheating on I got caught cheating on my wife and it camped the whole time. My wife couldn't call the curse me out the whole night. Every night. My head went into the fight, I wouldn't even think about it. But I knew I could be Eric I knew I could be Derek Harmon. And um, three days before the fight, they called and trans opponents. They pulled out. They put Eric Harden in, and, and my and Phil Torrance. They didn't even have to fight. You know, like, man, we ain't got to take this fight. He's never through in the world. I uh, don't know those guys. That they and the only reason I took that fight is because I didn't want to go home. It was to face my wife. And um, I still went there. The man ran like a girl for twelve rounds. And um. The announcer on TV said I won nine or ten rounds. I mean, it just was a terrible decision they gave it to Eric Harmon. They put him on the scene and, and you know, he made a name for himself. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, let's see, then you went to Germany, Roy never would go outside the country. I went to Germany, I went to Germany. How did uh, people treat you? Uh, everybody treated me well. I mean, it was, it was no problem until, uh, until, um, I get a ring, and, uh, I went every round on scorecard and beating the German world champion and American referee Joe Cortez, who was a dirty guy, stopped the fight for no reason. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he was a dirty guy. I don't care if you print this. I hate his ass. He was a dirty fucker. Mm-hmm. I, was, I hope it works for him. <laughs> I didn't hear you, man. I heard that before, I swear. <laughs> uh, I thought I forgot Joe Cortez. Yeah. So. And after that right. fight, I, I just. After, that, after the Roy Jones fight, Southern Roy Jones fight, the Aaron Harden fight, and the um, Nick Shelsey fight, I just said I was, was going to retire because I was just tired of the bullshit. Mm. I got fucked out of three fights in a row. And I, I just got tired of it. Mm hmm. So you didn't think I was watching it? Uh, okay. No, nah, say it again. I, I didn't want to cut you off. I said, no, nah, I said, after those three fights, I was just made to a double boxing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love boxing to death. It's in my blood. I just felt that I never got back from boxing without putting to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, I just said, what the hell? I was, I was tired of it. I came home, I opened up a clothing store, called myself only too tired and everything, but, you know. Of course, you know, the heart was still into it, and um, after a while, I came back. Mm-hmm. So, Mikoshevsky didn't surprise you at all with his power? He had no power. He couldn't, couldn't punch at all. I, wasn't, I was not hurt at all. The man hit me with two punches after, when, after the bear had run. The Joe Cortez, Dave has came in. I was back to no reason. Hmm. That sucks, man. Uh, you, let's see. Fought some pretty good tough fights, and then you had a chance to fight. Let's see, you fought for the two belts Roy gave up. You fought Tarver, right? And uh, yeah, I, I went to that fight actually. I love that fight. Yeah, I got hit the first round, I got hit with a, a legal punch in the back of the head. Mm-hmm. Nobody said that. I fought another round with a concussion. I had to go to the hospital after the fight. I had a concussion, I got hit in the back of the head. Nobody said nothing. I mean, there's some more bullshit I've been through my career. Hmm. So nothing good to say about Tarver? It didn't impress you at all? Uh, no, nah, not at all. Hmm. So you... you Two guys who I've been there with. Pardon? No, I was going to say, you were already like thinking about retiring anyway. Did you did you want to be back really, or did you kind of have to come back? Was your heart... Oh, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Say it again? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You said you wanted to get out of boxing after the Mikoshevsky fight. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I was, you know, I just, you know, time, you know, time, he was always going to be sitting around, not doing nothing, you know, I missed the game. That's why I came back. Yeah. And I was going to be in the ring with Joe Cortez, but I was going to be in the ring with Joe Cortez, but I was going to be in the ring with Joe Cortez. Mm-hmm. And I just shorted out. And I still wanted to listen to that. So after that fight, you were still into it, or you kind of got? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was. Uh, I just, I just couldn't believe all the bad breaks. I mean, I just, you know, I just, you know, uh, I think you think there's so many bad breaks. You just think things will turn turn around sooner or later. Mm-hmm. But you know, they never really, you know. And then you fought Glenn. They never really got it. What, what do you think about that? I thought Glenn Johnson, I, 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 um, I, I just got to, you know, so I don't have, I don't make no excuses or whatever, um, I don't take away from Glenn Johnson. I, I tried so hard to win that fight. I tried to change, and I, I overtrained and just burned myself out. And I just, I just didn't have the energy to fight the man to play around. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. I don't have, you know, I make no excuses. Um, but, I don't mean, I don't make great fighting, I don't make no excuses, but, Tom and Will Johnson, two guys that I can lose them. Um, I still don't really respect them as being a great finals. I mean, you know, not taking nothing away from them, but I don't, I don't look at them as that special. Mm-hmm. And then you took about a year off again. You fought Shumanov, another Olympian. What did you think of Shumanov? Uh, nothing. Um, I didn't even have those no skills. I had them. I had them right where I wanted them. Um, I knew the name of 
still tired. The trainer knew to my brother that he was ready to quit. I was ready to go in there and knock him out, and the man the head butted me. It's, and the front of the referee, the referee said nothing. Hmm. And then, again, you know what I'm saying? Another bad break. I'm not here about it. Damn, it sucks, man. <laughs> how, did, how did you like yeah, it? How do those people treat you? It, it was actually one of the greatest trips I ever took in my life. Oh, yeah? I was so surprised. Yeah, it was, the people were so nice. It was, it was a great trip. I, I got it was so much respect. And, uh, I was surprised. Cause I fought in Moscow at like 92. And, you know, that's before the, before the breakup. And it was poor. And it was terrible. I went to terrible, the worst trips I ever went to in my life. I go to Kazakhstan and one of the best trips I've ever had in my life. See, every time I see Russia, I want to go because the buildings, and they look so cool and stuff. So you didn't like Moscow? Yeah. Didn't like Moscow? Moscow was terrible. I, I told, you know, growing up in Chicago, I mean, before Mayor Daly was, was the mayor, it, Chicago was a terrible city. Not terrible, but they had bad neighborhoods. It was dirty and nasty. And, you know, after seeing Russia, Moscow, I said, I would never say nothing ever to about Chicago again. Mm -hmm. It was 10 times worse. Yeah. And, uh, so you're 41 now? Are you 41? Or 40? Yeah, I'm 42 in general. No worries. And you still fighting now, or you're done? No, I fought August of last uh, year. Um, I promised my wife that I was going to retire this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I just talked about it here the other night. I tried to, try to fight one more. Well, I want to try it's for years, um, and there's no doubt I'll be retired by the end this year. But uh, I would love to fight them one or two more times. Mm -hmm. I actually just had an exhibition last night. Felt pretty good, you know what I'm saying, like that. I ain't been to the gym. I ain't did nothing. I ain't trained. I ain't did nothing. I just been running a little bit, and um, fought an exhibition last night. And, uh, so, I'm well, not better than I thought I was going to feel. Mm -hmm. And you're still married to the same lady then? Things got good again? No, I got remarried. I got remarried with no, oh no. Mm. That's so uh, sad. Yeah. Things might be better now. <laughs> you got yeah, good. Yeah, that's cool. I, I got a good life, man. Yeah. Uh, I got an a 18 year old, a 6 year old, a 10 and 8 year old. Mm. That's good, man. And what's the happiest moment of your career? My father had my two kids in the My first two kids in the I was going to say that I just made my career was made one every team. And one year. I had 30, I had 30 amateur fights and I made them every team. And I think too many people said they could be that. So making the Olympic team was the best moment of your whole life? That was the best moment of my career, yeah. yeah. And what do you do outside of boxing? Are you training anybody? Are you planning to do anything after? Uh, I, I, I do personal training. I, I really... I really don't even really want to get into boxing because it's so dirty and corrupt. I try to, you know, I try to stay away from boxing. Um, I don't even watch boxing. Um, I just watch the big fights or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, boxing just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, like I said before, I just never got back from boxing that what I put, in, put, put into. But like I said, I do train. I'm in the gym about five, six days a week doing personal training. And, uh, I'm a cook kind of sheriff in Chicago. What do you do? I'm a Cook County Sheriff. You're a Sheriff? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that, man. That's great, man. Yeah, I've been there for like two years, yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. And do you ever think about uh, another fight with Roy? <laughs> He's still out? I, I would love to fight with him. I want to fight with so bad. Yeah, uh, Roy, Roy, don't, Roy don't want to me. Roy, Roy knows that he was going to stay with Roy. And at his best, he couldn't do nothing with me, so he, he would never want to fight me. Especially as bad as career has, has gotten to now. Mm -hmm. That would be, that would be, I could, I could, now I could actually fight Will Jones one more time and walk away and not think about boxing ever again if I could get you know, that fight on, you know, either way or under my belt. I would love to fight that man. I think you, my the first man that gave me my first loss. Mm -hmm. I think you might knock him out. I mean, whatever happens, I, I would destroy him without a question. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he has failed harder than any great fighter ever in history. Yeah. And what do you think of Glenn Johnson? He's still out there, too. I, 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 fight, I, fight, I fight Glenn, too. I don't know if I fight Glenn. Mm -hmm. 
know, we are, you know, whatever, we, whatever we've been taking off all these years, it's doing something for us. 